All right, everybody, in this video, we're gonna be talking about why you stopped investing and why that actually might be very, very bad for you. So let's get started. So this all started about a month ago when I posted on my Telegram journal, if I was asking, have you stopped investing recently? I noticed on YouTube, a lot of investing content had dried up. People weren't uploading as many investing videos. And so I asked, be honest, how many of you fell off the investing bandwagon or had to severely drop the time you spent following stocks because of the economy and recession? And the results were very interesting. I'll read some of these for you. I'm very insecure if I want to be in stocks right now. I hold a few, but my guess is that the whole stock market will drop significantly over the following months. Then here's another one. I couldn't tell which way it was going for the first time in a very long time, so I bought bricks and mortar. Here's another one. I've stopped spending 90% of the time I used and instead focusing on maximizing income and my status extension. It's more of a logical choice. I would love to have a lot more cash to actively invest, but the thing is, even if I do 20 to 30% every year with stocks over the next three years, it would still make sense to focus on maximizing income because I would make a lot more. So this is what's going on. We have three things acting in concert together that's caused people to stop investing. And these are, there's a lifestyle creep. As the economy got well, people spent more and more money. They got used to spending more money. They went on vacation, they started partying, and they go into clubs, they bought cars. So their expenses went up. But then at the same time, in 2021 and 2022, and now 2023, there was a stock pullback. The stock market went down, which you will see later. And then at the same time, people started raiding their emergency funds, going to their checking accounts, their savings started to trickle down. And so as a result, they started to invest a lot less. And by the way, if this happened to you, if you're not investing as much as you used to, you're using your emergency savings, don't feel that bad. This actually happened to a lot of YouTubers. So here we have a few finance investing YouTubers. These are the best of the best. So again, don't feel bad about this. Graham Stephan says he spent $45,000 on an aquarium. Obviously, that's a significant expense. You can see it here on the right. So Graham Stephan also is a victim of this lifestyle inflation. He went from filming videos in his duplex with one side rented out to another person in his garage to upgrading to a Nevada mansion with multi tens of thousands of dollar aquariums and also hiring employees to increasing the overhead on his YouTube channel. Not to say there's anything wrong with having employees and they're both very nice, but this increases the expense. As the economy got better, people spent more and more money and their lifestyle inflated. Let's look at me, Kevin. As the market peaked, he got himself a private jet. And so just remember, these people are financial educators. So if the same thing happened to you, don't feel bad about it. But then let's look at the result here. So we have the S&P 500. And so what happens is if you don't invest during these dips, let's say you only invest at the top and then stop investing at the bottom, you will dramatically underperform the market. This is because generally, even since 1994, the market has gone up over time. So if you quit every time it hits a dip right there, you miss out on a lot of gains afterwards. Even looking at this chart right here, which in the red bars, the S&P 500 lost money that year, and then the green bars are where it gained money that year, you can see that there are more gain years than loss years. So if you skip every time there's a loss year, you'll lose out on these upcoming gain years. So let's take a look at this express through TQQ, right? So here we can see the recession in action. It peaked out here in early 2022 and it's been dropping ever since, discouraging people from investing. But now I'm gonna show you exactly how this dramatically hurts you. So let's say you buy at the top and then after as the stock market drops, you quit investing because you get discouraged, you don't have the money, you wanna focus on your income and then follow up on that. We're now here in 2023 and guess what? It's at the bottom. If you're not investing at this point, you're missing out on this potential gain afterwards if the market were to recover. So for people who only bought at this time and then did buy at the bottom, they have to wait three years to break even. Whereas if you're buying now, by the time these two groups of people, right? So there's person A who bought only at the top and then gave up on investing afterwards because they got discouraged. There's person B who's also buying at the bottom. When these two people reach the same point right here, now in 2025, this person has three X his money and this person has only broken even. So as in they haven't gained anything in that entire time. So what are the takeaways here? Shares bought now, as in right now during the dips and these kinds of recessions, are worth more than any share you bought during 2021 or 2022. And even with the fast, dramatic recovery of the stock market, it could be as late as something like 2025 before you break even if you don't buy shares at the bottom too and if you give up investing. And so assuming that there is a fast recovery, shares bought in 2023 may be worth three times what they are worth now versus people who only bought in 2021, they haven't made any money. And so this is why generational wealth is made during recessions. This is why the rich get richer and the poor get poorer, especially on the stock market. You have people who follow the hype and invest during the high years because they quickly make money, but then get discouraged and lose out and sell out during the lower years because they aren't consistently investing. Whereas rich people don't have to worry about their day-to-day -day expenses or they're more disciplined in the stock market and they buy both at the high times and at the low times and average in and spend as much time in the market as possible. So take this as a PSA to continue investing because the future has a lot in store for you. So let's ask yourself, growth probably isn't over. Sure, we have international conflict, weak banks and rising interest rates, but also there are things to look forward to. For example, the AI revolution is greatly improving productivity. As soon as the big major companies like Apple, Amazon, Google, 
and all the other AI companies figure out this technology, then lease it out to smaller players in the stock market, this will improve their productivity dramatically. And also too, there is a potential in the future that supply chains can be stabilized and prices may drop and also the economy may improve. So if you're still worried that the stock market is dangerous, you don't know what to expect, we could be on the cliff before another crash, watch this video on screen now about how to make money from dropping stocks in a crashing stock market.